Good day everyone, how's it going? Coming at you from the studio today and I want to show you how C-Log works on the Canon 5D Mark IV. What it does well, what it doesn't do well, uh, how the look of the footage is and then I'm going to take it into Premiere and give it a quick color grade to show you the difference between a standard picture profile and the Canon C-Log. So let's get straight into it. So here is my C-Log image and now before the shot at the start of the video you saw was in standard picture profile. So might just cycle back to the standard picture profile. So this here is the C-Log image turned off and Basically, this is set in standard mode. Now, if I cycle through the info here, I uh, wanted to show you the histogram here. This is the histogram for the image at the moment where it's not clipping. The only thing that's probably clipping are these two lights here in the highlights. So probably a little bit dark in this image. I'll probably like lighten it up a bit. So I might just do that. I'll just adjust on the camera app here. Uh, my exposure a little bit just to adjust it up a little bit so uh, I'm at f 1.8 now and you can see the still the only thing that's clipping is the highlights there so that image is looking pretty good it probably looks a little bit overexposed here in this area so I might drop that down to maybe f2 so let me just drop that down to f2 Cool, so this is kind of my image here. Now I'm gonna cycle back to Canon Log or switch on Canon Log. So let me just do that. Okay, so now I'm in Canon Log. And as you can see on the histogram, it looks much different. What it sort of does, I guess you could say, in a very simple way to explain it, is it compresses down all the information uh, so it takes, you know, in a standard picture profile, let's say that you're shooting in, it basically kind of squeezes all that information and fits it into a much um, narrower, um, what's the word, a much narrower dynamic range. But that allows it to increase the amount of stops either end of dynamic range that it has because it can fit in more information. It can squeeze that information into a, a smaller um, histogram as you can see. So again, I'll switch back to standard and just have a look at the change in the histogram. So this is now my standard picture profile and you can see the histogram is much more wider. It's widened out, it's fattened out. It's not as, um, you know, in this area here, it's not as compressed down and it's got a lot more information in this area here. So it really is compressing that right down quite substantially. So again, I'll cycle back to the log. All right, and again, we're back in the log profile. Now, in this log profile, I'm currently sitting uh, probably a little bit underexposed, and I wanted to show you what the difference is between exposing for log and exposing for just a normal picture profile. So let me just grab my gray card and I'm gonna set this scene for my skin tone. Cool, so I just got my gray card over here. Now I've done another video on this, uh, which is basically how I set the white balance and exposure. And I'll link that above. That's been really well received. Um, I've had some amazing comments on that being a really well explained video. But basically, this is the ProMaster ProMaster Digital Exposure Card. Okay, white, grey. Uh, if you can that there. That's what I'm using um, to get this set. So now I'm basically going to set it in my face, my area here, and I'm just going to kind of go with where the light I've got set up here is reflecting off my face and into the camera lens. And now you can see the spike over here is at about 40% IRE. And that's exactly where I want to expose my Canon C-Log. It's about 42%, depends on what you, what 
what type of sea log it is, but I want to expose this at 40% uh, around about. So I think 40%, like around about there, if you look now right here, that is about 42%. IRE. So maybe it's a little overexposed. So I might then go down up to f2.2 and then I'll see that's just under 40%. So I'm actually going to go to f2 and I'm happy with where that is. So that's my exposure for Canon C log at 40%. Now I just want to cycle quickly back again. So now I'm back at the standard picture profile and I'll show you where the skin tone lies for this. And it's much further up. Um, it's at around about 55. Sorry, 65 IRE. Now that's overexposed. So my skin tone in this shot is overexposed. So Correct exposure for my skin tone in this shot would probably be about here. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, so you can see where I'm working on this is around about here. That's the skin tone. That's reflecting off this gray card, which is around about 50%. So you can see the difference between the two. It's about two stops of, of light different between getting correct exposure with the C log and with the standard picture profile. So I'm going to go back to F2. This is now overexposing the standard picture profile, but you'll see once I cycle back to my main shot that it is correctly exposed for C log at around just over 40% IRE. Cool. So that's basically the shot. Now let me take this shot into post and color grade it so you can have a good look at what that looks like and how it looks in terms of color grading inside the software. I've also got two other clips that I shot with Canon Log in two different lighting scenarios. This is obviously an, a controlled environment with one big softbox here in front of me uh, or off to the side, but I wanna show you what it looks like in a non-controlled environment where there was some lighting issues, another situation where I shot indoors with some green cast and another situation where I shot outdoors kind of into a very sunny area and there was a high dynamic range that I had to kind of try and cover in that shot. So let's jump right in and check it out. Okay, so here we are on screen with the log shot. Now, a few things here is I recorded this through um, OBS, so it's not the full raw version from the Canon, directly out of the Canon. It's actually a compressed uh, file, so there's gonna be some compression artifacts and stuff in the image that I wouldn't normally need to worry about, but just so you're aware of that. Uh, so basically, now you're seeing over here the scopes of the recorded uh, C-Log footage. Now, in comparison to the the standard profile, here it is, the standard profile footage, which I'm now shooting on and back to recording onto the Canon 5D Mark IV. So this is the standard image you're looking at now. And again, I'm gonna go back to, this is the C-Log image. So you can see it's a much flatter picture profile overall. Um, basically, yeah, it's quite a bit flatter overall. Um, you get quite a bit less information um, in the histogram there. But really, it, the information is there. We just need to now extract it in the color grade process. So let's start by uh, widening the dynamic range a little bit. So basically, I'm going to I'm just gonna adjust the exposure a little bit. I think I was a little bit under, so I'm gonna raise it up to 1.1. Then I'm gonna look at the highlights, and I wanna kinda of pull the highlights up so they're, clip, so they're sitting around 90 at the top. So this is these two lights over here. So these two I'm not as worried about, but the highlights I wanna pull all the way up uh, to 90. Then the Shadows, uh, I'm going to drop the shadows down a little bit, um, just to about 10 at the bottom of the histogram. And this is kind of forming my base point for the grade. So if I just cycle that on and off, I'm basically pulling up the base point for the grade. Now it's introduced some yellow, orange tones into there, 
Uh, so if you look at the standard picture profile now, we're looking at it's a lot more reds and nicer skin tones in there But this has introduced a little bit of orange and stuff and still you can see there's a lot less contrast in the sea log image So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up some saturation in the sea log image uh, Just drop in some saturation maybe about 120 there and again, it's pulled up this yellow tone that I'm going to try and get rid of and correct later um, and the blacks, I'm going to crush the blacks down a little bit too um, to kind of try and match up. So now I feel like even though our color's off, our color shift is off, um, I feel like this is a little bit too red in the standard picture profile. I feel like this is a little bit too yellow. So now I'm going to work on feeling like I've got that pretty close. I'm going to work on the white balance here a little bit. So I'm just going to basically add some blue tone into there and pull some of the red up as well. So now I feel like we're getting closer to a similar shot um, between the log and the standard. So again, standard and log. Still got yellow here in the highlights, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, that's pretty close to what I would want. Anyway, to get rid of that, I can jump into the color um, wheel here and I can actually do a color match and put it into comparison view. I can select the, um, let me just cycle through to find that. Where are we here? I can select the standard profile here and this is now my log image here and you can see how the histograms are getting pretty close. As I said, there's some artifacting in the log profile just because the way I recorded the image. So you can see some steps and some lines here. That's just artifacting. But you can see I'm pretty close in everything here. The only probably difference is more yellow in the skin tone, more yellow in this log image over on this side than in this image. So now if I turn off the grade, you can see I've basically brought back all that information. So this is in the highlights here, the yellow. So I'm gonna work on the highlights and I'm gonna add more red back into the highlights. Try and match them up a bit better. And it's coming in, it's bleeding into my skin tone quite a bit. So I'm gonna leave that as it is. Maybe I'll reduce it a little bit out of the highlights and add red. Add a bit of red in there. So I'm a little bit closer. I think that is probably pretty close because what I actually think is I maybe introduced a little bit too much red into the standard picture profile. So I'm going to come out of comparison view and I'm actually just going to come back to a little more. Come back a little more over there. A little more red magenta. And then mid-tones will look at red magenta as well. So that's kind of the image that I'm going for. So let me just toggle off what I've done there with just removing some of that yellow, adding a little bit more magenta in to the image just to kind of clean it up a little bit and lowering the exposure a little bit of the highlights. And I think we're in a better final result there. So there was a little bit off in the white, something a little bit off in the white balance there um, to start with. So I wouldn't work much more on this image. This is just for a vlog for YouTube. So that pretty much gets me in the ballpark of where I want to be compared to my standard shot here. Then I've got the standard shot and the sea log shot there. So that's kind of where I'm going to finish with that shot. Now the second shot I'm going to work on is this shot. This is a shot I did a commercial shoot which was really well lit. But uh, the gaffer had these LEDs that introduced a little bit of green into the image. So basically there is a green hue across the whole image. This is a weird cream color kitchen. Danny is... Um, got some makeup on which differs 
her facial skin tone with her arms. So this is kind of tricky. Uh, this was tricky to navigate, but basically I just want to run you through a basic correction here that I'm going to do. I'm going to actually pick a white here because I know this cup is white. So my white balance was pretty spot on. It's only dropped to negative five and it's up to two on the tint and dropped negative five on the temperature. So my white balance was really close. Uh, when I picked it, the fluoros were at 5600 Kelvin, which is a daylight Kelvin. So I think it was pretty well set. Uh, my camera was pretty much set to 5500 or 5600 Kelvin. So it was pretty close. Uh, so basically, again, I think contrast is pretty right here. I like the fact that I'm not clipping any of the lows and the highlights are around about 70, which is about right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the highlights all the way up so that they're up at 100 and I'm going to drop the shadows down so that they're sitting at about minus 10 at the bottom there. So that <clears throat> now is my first initial um, grade I'm going to do. This needs to be saturated a bit so I'm going to boost the saturation a little bit up to maybe 110, 115. It introduces again some in some sort of weird color into the skin tone and I'm seeing a green um, color overall as well so but basically that's my first couple of corrections I want to do and then I want to just pull contrast up give this a bit more of a contrasty look and my exposure maybe I'll pull up a little bit as well just to get rid of some of that lower darker skin tone in there so that's kind of my initial uh, correction that I'll do and then in the curves uh, I want to look at the color wheel sorry I just want to look work a little bit here on the overall color because there's this green cast um, so what I'm doing here is the green to get rid of the green you just want to move away from the green in the mid-tone the mid-tones where the skin tones are so I'm going to move towards magenta a little bit here maybe down towards blue a little bit and I'm liking that correction um, more so it's just removing some of that green as you can see just popping now I'm going to go back to the basic correction and I'm going to boost the contrast again and I'll crush down the blacks a little more just to give it a little more range there so something like that so if I turn that off that's my original image in the C log what I captured in and then that's my final kind of color grade there. Now, one other thing here, guys, is I'm working on calibrated monitors here. So what it looks like here for me might be completely different to what it looks like for you. So just keep that in mind in the comments that, you know, if it looks really off, it could be that your monitor's not calibrated or that my calibration's different. I'm working in a Rec. 709 color space. So this isn't perfect, but this looks pretty good and Danny looks a lot better, her skin looks a lot less um, green. If I just cycle again, you can see that green tinge that's across the footage and here you can see that it's a lot, um, a lot better. So that's kind of what I would probably, where I would probably leave it, maybe a little less, a little less blue or more blue, but somewhere somewhere like that maybe a little bit more pushing the saturation a little bit more as well but something like that uh, I wouldn't be too unhappy with as a final result kitchen looks fine still looks cream in these areas a little bit more white in these areas the white still looks white skin tone matches pretty good there's some um, issues here that I might work on uh, later on and, and try and clean these up a bit just a little bits of brightness and where her skin just kind of caught the light but compared to what it came in at that's the log image and then the final image would be something like that all right cool and the final one I have to show you guys is this this is Jai Sheridan he got the surf lifesaver of the year for 2017 and I did a little short for the Weather Channel out of the US on him and on the drones that they use now in surf lifesaving in Australia. So this was interesting because I, I was really struggling between getting uh, him correctly exposed and the background uh, correctly exposed as well. Obviously his face is in shadow so I had to make sure that his face was 
you know, it sort of came, um, was, was visible enough and the information was there for his face because he's the subject, not the shot. So this is kind of what I came up with in terms of how I um, got the shot in log. And then I'll just show you how I worked on this to get this back. So I brought his skin tone up quite a bit. So I pulled up the image quite a lot. Now this is something you could not do with something shot in an EOS HD or if you had um, a um, Cine style LUT, uh, or Cine style picture profile, if you shot in standard, there's no way I would be able to do anything near what I'm doing here to get this image back to where it needed to be. So, but pull up the exposure, uh, then the highlights, probably keep the highlights pretty low, not pull them up too much, but certainly dropping the um, shadows and bringing the shadows right back down, probably right down to around about there. I'm, in, I'm liking his skin tone, that's great, and saturation, I probably could pull up quite a bit. So something like that as a quick grade, um, and then just cycling that on and off. You can see now his face is popping a lot more in the frame, I'll just pull that up. You can see that his face is popping a lot more in the frame um, than the original clip there's not a lot of detail in his facial uh, stuff so what happened is when he put his head up as well it did look better it ended up looking a lot better because he uh, his face was moving and stuff like that he wasn't looking down there wasn't as much shadow cast on his face so that's sort of what log allowed me to do with that shot Canon log and I didn't shoot it in standard so I couldn't show you the difference there but the difference of shooting this in long and standard it would have been completely different. It would have been completely blown out at the back and there would have been no information here at the back whatsoever. So to the point where I can actually take this image into DaVinci Resolve or something like that and I can get all those highlights back, you know, in the background areas there. So the whites, I can, I can you know, manipulate and maneuver the whites as well um, to bring back the information in the background there and you can see in the sky if I was to drop the exposure a little bit you can see there is information there in the sky still so there wasn't a real loss of information overall so that allowed me to use that sort of shot and image and they wanted a shot that was showing the beach which was really tricky in the middle of the day the sun was really high it was hot but they wanted that kind of shot so I got that shot for them and I was able to do it with Canon C-Log where I wouldn't have been able to otherwise. Well guys, that's it from me. Hopefully you got something out of this. It was a little bit all over the place, I know, but just to show you of the C-Log, how to expose it correctly, and then how to work with it in post-production in Premiere Pro directly. So hopefully you guys got something out of this, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Make sure you hit the like button. If you have any questions about C-Log, chuck a comment down below and I will get back to you straight away or as soon as I can. And hopefully you're loving the content. And if you did like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. All right, we'll see you in the next video.